Dilated cardiomyopathy is an intrinsic muscle disorder of the heart and it results in a large heart with rather thin walls where there is progressive reduction in the capacity of the heart to pump. The patients with dilated cardiomyopathy have something like a 20% mortality at five years, so there's a very significant uh, adverse cardiac event rate in these patients, as well as the side effects of having reduced pumping in the heart, such as fatigue and shortness of breath. Our first results showed that patients with dilated cardiomyopathy either have no fibrosis in the heart or they have a mid-wall stripe which is quite unique to this condition. We've gone on to show that when the fibrosis is present it's a strong predictor of sudden cardiac death and other outcomes. We would like to take the fibrosis imaging that we've developed and use it to better predict which patients need a defibrillator because about 40% of patients receiving these devices do not get a shock and this is a waste of healthcare resources and a worry to the patient. Finally, we've been able to identify new genes causing this condition, most importantly titin, which seems to cause about 25% of the genetic cases of this disease. The Cardiovascular Genetics Laboratory is run as a collaboration between Royal Brompton and Harefield NHS Trust and Imperial College London. Uh, we study the genetic basis of inherited cardiovascular conditions and in particular dilated cardiomyopathy which affects about 1 in 250 people in the UK. Recently we've been focusing on the Titan gene uh, which encodes the largest protein in the human body. In 2012 together with our international collaborators we identified Titan as the most important genetic cause of dilated cardiomyopathy. We've been combining detailed clinical assessment of our patients with DCM, uh, in particular with gold standard cardiac MRI, with a genetic assessment to really under the role of the gene in this condition. One of the important outcomes of the research work, both from the imaging perspective, where we can now pick up fibrosis and early changes in the heart, and also from the genetics work, is that we now have the means of picking up the condition early. We're using next generation gene sequencing platform, instead of only looking at a few genes at a time, we're now able to look at 170 genes in one go with a much faster turnaround and also much more cheaply. That's a very important advance and because of that it's enabled us to set up a family clinic where rather than seeing patients that are manifested with a condition already, we now have an opportunity for early detection, early intervention in family members that potentially may be at risk. The way we have done this is to see the whole family in one setting and we run a one-stop shop service. So they all come in, they all have an ECG, an echo, a cardiac MRI scan and blood tests and then we'll see them with the results. That's been both much more efficient, it's also been much more effective and from a patient perspective, one visit instead of multiple visits. It also means that we're able to reassure much more quickly those patients that haven't got the gene that they don't need to be under surveillance.